Okay, last couple of classes we have been looking at uh, circuit theorems or network theorems and uh, what are the uh, theorems we have seen so far? The first theorem we saw was substitution theorem. Then based on that uh, we set up uh, proved two more theorems. One was Thevenin's theorem, the other was Norton's theorem. The advantage of these two is that it helps you to simplify uh, a network between any two terminals to simply either a series combination of a voltage source and a resistance which is Thevenin's theorem or a parallel combination of a current source and a resistance which is Norton's theorem. Now note that if you want to test uh, or if you want to find out the Thevenin or Norton equivalent resistance, they are obviously both the same because you are simply looking at the effective resistance of the net of the network between those two terminals of interest when the network is nulled. In other words, all independent voltage and current sources are set to zero. Now, for any arbitrary network, the right way to do this is to apply a test voltage and find out what test current is drawn by the network between those two terminals. Okay. You could also alternatively apply a test current and find out what voltage is developed across those two terminals. Both will give you the same answer. Obviously, when you do it this way, when you apply V test and I test, the control sources inside the network will be energized and they will change the Thevenin resistance or not in resistance between those two terminals. The next theorem that we looked at was what was called maximum power transfer theorem. Okay. Um, in this particular case, what you are interested in is you have a network okay, and across some two terminals 1 and 1 prime, you are going to connect some load resistance. What you want to do is, this network itself comprises uh, a whole bunch of voltage sources, current sources, dependent sources, resistors, whatever you want. Okay, And what you are trying to do is deliver power from this network into this load resistor. And we want to maximize the power delivered to this load resistor. Okay, And as it turns out, if you try to Look at the expression for the power. Okay, first of all, you can express it in many ways. If you have a load resistance RL and it has a voltage VL across it, okay, and a current IL through it, okay, the power can be expressed as VL times IL, VL squared by RL, or IL squared RL. Okay, now you can say uh, that you could replace this network by its seven and equivalent. Right, any network can be replaced by 7 and equivalent. So that makes your job that much simpler. All you have is a very simple network. You have VTH, RTH and to complete the loop you have the load resistance RL. Now, look, so if you just look at one of these expressions, if you look, let us say if you look at the expression using current, it says IL squared RL. Very clearly IL itself depends on RL in this case. And you can clearly see that if you keep increasing RL, uh, the IL will also reduce okay, correspondingly. The extreme case is when you have an open circuit, there is no power delivered to the load. Similarly, if you look at the other case, when you look at VL squared by RL expression, it's, it's not right to simply assume that you keep reducing RL and the power will increase. Very clearly, the extreme case of that is simply a short circuit. There is no power delivered okay, to a short circuit wire. So, as it turns out, you can show that the... Uh, Ashwin, can you get that guy and ask him to reduce the volume a little bit? As it so turns out, the maximum power happens when the load resistance is exactly matched to the Thevenin resistance. And you will encounter cases like this in, uh, in practice. Um, any idea where you might encounter something like this? Huh? Internal? Internal resistance of what? Of a battery. Is that right? Is that the case where you might encounter this? 
Yeah, so if you just look at a battery, right, if you look at its internal resistance, you ideally want it to be extremely small, right. You are not going to try to load the battery with the exact same value as what its internal resistance is. Ideally, you just want to minimize it as much as possible and then use it. So a battery is not the appropriate example. As he pointed out, the one common example, uh, one common case where you might see this is in communication. Okay, when you are trying to receive a signal uh, through an antenna for example, right? As it so turns out, all the circuitry, the antenna itself has an uh, impedance of 50 ohms, okay, which happens to be a standard and you are going to try to any circuitry that is connected to the antenna is also going to be matched to 50 ohms to make sure that you transfer as much power as possible. What does this tell you? You are trying to maximize the power transferred from the this network N to the load, right? And that will be a case when the power itself is... Uh, it will be most effective when the power available from the network is already extremely small and such is the case when you actually try to receive a signal through an antenna because the actual transmitting station is many kilometers away okay by the time you receive it it's of the order of microvolts okay the power you receive is of the order of microwatts okay in that case every bit of power counts you can't afford to lose any power at all but note that whatever you do the maximum power that you can actually get once you match it what is that power so we said rl equal to rth gives maximum power what is that pl max what is pl max it is PTH squared, VTH squared by 4 RTH ok this is the maximum power that you can actually receive <coughs> that you can actually get from this particular network <coughs> now we ended by moving on to a slightly different topic so let's revisit that again So let us say I take any arbitrary graph representing a network, okay. Each one of these branches or edges represents a particular element in the network and I know that I am following passive sign convention. So I am going to represent the voltage and current, <coughs> voltage of across any branch and the current through any branch, okay, by some appropriate numeral. So let us say this was v1 and this current was i1 and note the directions the minute I choose the direction of v1 I am going to assume passive sign convention let's say this was v2 and I have a current i2 this is v3 I have a current i3 this was v4 and I have a current i4 V5 and a current I5 ok so I just choose the any particular in any particular direction I list out the voltages and currents of all branches and I want to sum create the sum of this VK and IK across all all branches ok and in yesterday's class I asked you to figure this out using KVL and KCL <coughs> did anybody try this on Thursday's class I asked you to do this ok any suggestions on how to proceed write the sum of currents at every node is 0 ok so that we already know so KCL says sigma ok across any node n is 0 correct that is KCL ok perfect ok so now yeah you can sit down that is the right way to do this so what we will do suppose uh, now I am let us say I start naming the nodes 0 1 2 3 and so on till some uh, uh, n ok 
and so name the node say 1 2 3 and so on until some n okay and suppose I have any branch in the network and let us say it goes between some two nodes k and l okay so if I were writing the expression for vi for this particular branch what will I be writing it as vkl which is the voltage across that branch times okay I have a current IKL flowing from K to sorry flowing from K to L right and I want to sum this over all the nodes okay all the branches in other words now what I am going to do I know that the voltage between K and L okay which is VKL can be written as the difference between two potentials the potential of K and the potential of L with respect to some reference node okay with respect to actually any arbitrary reference so I can write this as sigma over N VK minus VL times IKL okay so what is IKL right now? IKL is the current leaving K and entering L right that is my reference <coughs> so what I can do next is so far I have been using my branches as the reference now I am going to go, go back and change my reference to each node okay you understand what I am trying to do our initial focus was on the branch okay I was taking the voltage across the branch the current through the branch doing you know summing that over the complete network now what I am going to do I am trying to move the focus away from the branch to the node so the first thing I did was I represented the voltage across the branch in terms of the voltage of the node okay the next thing I am going to do is I am going to look at each node okay first let us say I take some node M okay <coughs> I take some node M what will I have for that node the voltage of that node M where will it appear it can either appear here or here okay depending on where you are writing where you are going to sum the VIs correct if it was if it corresponds sorry if it corresponded to node K okay when you are looking at all sum of all current leaving it will appear in the left hand side in the VK term okay if you are looking at the current entering it from some other node okay which is connected to this it will appear on this side okay so I take M so Vm times sum of all currents leaving the node okay maybe I'll remove this notation uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have it so sum of all currents leaving node M correct that would be Vm times sigma ik okay what about the, that will correspond to this term what about this guy that will give you a minus Vm okay actually plus I'll do the same thing this corresponds to currents leaving M this corresponds to currents entering M 
Okay. So I have first, this has two steps. The first step is to move the focus away from the branch to the node. Okay. The second step is to represent the voltages as the sum of, as the difference between the two voltages. The next step is to replace this IKL in terms of, if you are looking at node K where the currents are all leaving, if your focus is on the node when the currents are all leaving, you sum all sum of all currents leaving that node. Okay. If your focus is on the right hand side, you will look at sum of all currents entering M. What do we know from KCL? What do we know about the relationship between these two? We know from KCL that sum of all currents leaving M should be the same as sum of all currents entering M and therefore we are going to do this across all nodes so M equals 1 to N ok and this will be 0 ok anyway go, go back to your hostel and think about this I have given you the basic idea behind how to do this maybe if you think about it a little bit more if you don't understand it straight away just think about what I have said move the focus away from the branch to the node ok and then think about this particular step ok so this particular theorem is called Telegon's theorem ok so what it tells you is if you take any graph ok <coughs> and you sum across every branch you take Vk I times Ik and you sum it over the graph that should be equal to 0 ok that is quite uh, somewhat straightforward to prove using just KVL and KCL now Telegon of course it's named after the person who actually proved this now as it so turns out uh, Telegon didn't stop there ok so he went ahead to do something more so what he said is suppose I take some graph ok this is just an example graph ok you don't need to take this as the <coughs> is just representative and he said suppose I take two networks ok I take two networks n and n hat ok so this is the first statement so second statement would be I have two networks n and n hat that have the same graph ok so first the first step the first statement ok was if I take any network ok I do sigma vk ik that is 0 that's all very well and good last class already some of you said you know it comes from energy conservation that's absolutely right ok and it is just a restatement of energy conservation and uh, it can be proven ok now the second step uh, or the second uh, there is a second part of Telegon's theorem it says if you take two networks n n hat ok that have the same graph that is very important they need to have the same graph ok there is a relationship but I want to I want to create this product ok so the so network n has v k i k network n hat has v k hat i k hat ok I want to create this sum sigma v k i k hat what do you think that will be obviously you can't tell right it seems like you can't tell you will need to know what this circuit is that makes up you need to know the network that will make up this graph so uh, let us say
this is one network that has this graph 0 1 2 3 Okay, this is n hat, okay, this is n, this is n hat, examples of n and n hat, okay. And I am going to define, you know, I can, the way I wrote down for the graph, v1, i1, v2, i2 and so on, and for the network n hat, I will write down v1 hat, i1 hat, v2 hat, i2 hat and so on. I want to try to create the sum. IK hat. Okay. How would you proceed? Actually one, before we go forward, I just wanted to point out one thing. If you look at Telegon's theorem for a single network, sigma VK IK equal to 0, you use KVL, KCL to prove this. Very clearly, it does not depend on what the network consists of okay there is no restriction on whether the network can have linear elements nonlinear elements resistors only or uh, dependent sources nothing okay this is true for any network because we know that kvl kcl is valid for any network okay that is important to know now coming back to this <coughs> how would you go about finding out what this value is so let us say okay so let us say I have this one consists of I1, I2 and so on till some IN. Okay, it has some these current variables through every branch. Okay, actually maybe I will use IB because we are talking about branches. Now what I want to do, okay, is try to find out this sum. I am going to take this network n hat, okay, <coughs> and or rather I am going to take this network n hat which has solutions i1 hat, i2 hat and so on. So this network has i1 hat, i2 hat, so on. IB hat and I am going to take those currents ok take my original network so I am going to redraw this guy N Okay, which has these VK and IK. I am going to start adding current sources between every two nodes, okay, or across every branch. In this manner. in this manner the value of these current sources so this was branch 1 branch 2 branch 3 branch 4 and branch 5 the value of these current sources is going to be i1 hat okay i2 hat i3 hat i4 hat and i5 hat you understand what i am doing I am going to add current sources across each one of these branches okay in network n the value of the current sources is going to be the value of the branch currents in n hat okay across branch 1 I am adding i1 hat across branch 2 I am adding i2 hat and so on now what is this 
I am going to define this parallel combination of the original branch and this new current source as the new branch element. Remember, this is true for any two terminal element. I don't care what is there inside. Okay, it could be a very complex network inside. As long as I take two terminals, I access this network using two terminals. Okay, I can use that as the representative of my branch. What does that mean? 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, each one of these networks circled in L, as each one of these branches circled in yellow, okay, is now a, my new branch. So, what can I write? Suppose I write elegance theorem for that. What does that give me? Sigma. First of all, suppose I add these current sources. Before we start writing the sigma, I am adding these current sources. I need to ensure that, I need to prove that my network has not changed. How do you prove that? What is the sum of all currents that have been added to node 1? It is sigma, it is i1 hat plus i4 hat. That is the sum of all currents leaving node 1 of the currents that have been newly added. What is that? 0. Why is it 0? Because if you apply KCL, okay, at node 1 for network n hat, very clearly the sum of current leaving that node should be 0. Similarly, for e every one of these nodes, okay, very clearly by modifying the network by adding simply these i hat current sources, you have not modified the network in any way, okay, because you are not adding any new current to any one of these nodes. Is that clear? So, you are not going to modify VKs at all. So, now, for this new network, VK times, what are the new branch currents? IK plus IK hat are the new branch currents. For this, if I define a new element, okay, in the original one it was IK, in parallel with that I have added IK hat. So, if I create the new statement of Telegram's theorem for this network, uh, if I create the statement of Telegram's, Telegram's theorem for this new network, that would be sigma VK times IK plus IK hat is equal to 0. Is this procedure clear so far? Any questions? If you want me to repeat it, I will. Yes. Yes. Actually, so far in the graph, I have not defined any reference node. All I have done is similar to what I have done. I have uh, earlier, this is V1, this is I1 and so on. I don't have any reference node. I have taken every branch using passive sign convention, I have defined a voltage across it and a current through it. There is no reference node here. Okay? The reference node comes only when you try to prove Telegram's theorem. Okay? Any other questions? Yes. Sir, uh, when we take, uh, <laughs> when we talk, when we tell that the uh, network did not change. Yes. Uh, and then we tell that uh, the current uh, in that branch is IK plus IK. <coughs> I am defining a new branch. Okay. The new branch is the parallel combination of the branches from N and N hat. No, sir, but uh, from 1. Yes. Node 1 to node 0. Yes. The current uh, will still be I1. No, it won't. It will be this plus this, no? Why will it just be I1? No, sir. I have not modified the voltages. See, I have not done two things. I have, sum of all currents entering any node is zero because that is true for, KCL is true for N hat. Correct? So, by adding these current sources, I have not changed the voltages of any of these nodes. I have also not changed the topology of the network. The network has remained exactly the same. Okay, I have two terminal at a two terminal branch between one and zero. I have a branch between one and two. The only thing what has happened is this branch is composed of an element which is more complex. It still only has two terminals. Okay, as long as I am not adding any extra current into one, two, three, or zero, the voltages of those nodes will not change. Is that clear? Somebody has had a question. Yes.
there is no rk now i have an rk in parallel with i i1 it is not resistive it doesn't need to be resistive why do you say it's rk no it's not there is a resistance in parallel with the current source Okay, so now you are going, you are talking about the original network. You are talking about, which of these networks, uh, sorry, have I actually drawn the network wrongly? Yes, I have. I wish one of you had pointed this out. I had a current source originally, I didn't even have a resistor. So let us say 1 and 2, okay. Current across it is modified. What do you mean by current across it is modified? So, let me ask you this. So, you, you don't, you, I have an element here, okay? I have a current passing through the element. I have a voltage across the element, okay? Now, inside this, suppose I had this element was composed of this. As long as I am monitoring only these two nodes, those currents, those voltages, what I am saying is, I am monitoring only these two nodes. The current through this internal resistor does not change, okay, because the voltages do not change. However, the current through this composite element, which is defined as the current here, does change. Okay, if this was I1, this is I1 hat, okay, this current is actually I1 plus I1 hat. Okay? Whereas this voltage stays at V1 and V2. Is that clear? That is what I am saying. Any questions? Okay? So now if I apply Telegram's theorem to this new network, okay, which has the same voltages, same VKs and the same topology, you can see that sigma over all branches Vk times Ik plus Ik hat should be 0. What does this tell you? I already know that sigma Vk Ik equal to 0 for n. Okay? So, Now this is something amazing, right? What is this telling you? I have two independent networks, okay? They can have any elements inside them, okay? As long as they have the same graph, okay? I take the voltages, okay, across the branches in node, in network 1, which is network N, okay? And take the current through the other network N hat, and I form this product sigma vk ik hat that will also be zero. Okay, does 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 this seem a little bit weird to you? <coughs> because the original one made sense, right? Because it had uh, implications for energy conservation. You are talking about the same network, same branches, same elements, voltages and currents inside that. Now what you are saying is, I am taking the voltages from one network taking the current from another network and forming this product. Obviously, if I choose to do the other way, so now I said sigma vk ik hat is 0. What will also be true is sigma vk hat ik is also 0. I can do that by forming the, doing the same thing, taking all the current sources from n, putting them across the elements in n hat. Okay? And I can show that this is also true. So this is the second portion of Telegram's theorem. Any questions? See, so far all of this is true irrespective of what the network consists of. But I also want to point out, it could consist of nonlinear elements and so on, you don't care. Now you could take this one step further, okay. Now, uh, this will get weirder uh, as it goes, right? I have two, uh, two networks, okay? I take the voltages 
Okay, so I take, I have two N networks N and N hat, which have VK, IK, VK hat, IK hat. Okay, now you may not have immediate appreciation for this because so far we have been looking at steady states of circuits. However, suppose I decide to form the product VK of at any time P1 times IK hat at any time P2 that will also obviously be 0 because KCL will be valid at T1 and T2 KVL will be valid at T1 and T2 ok now this is getting even weirder right you take the solution for network at time T1 the voltages and currents in the network would be changing ok we have not seen those examples so far but you will be seeing them in the future ok you take these voltages at time T1 take the currents from the other network at time T2 ok and this will still be true because all you are using is KCL you could the parallel current sources that you added could have been IK of T2 IK hat of T2 ok now obviously some of these results are useful for example this result we wrote here ok this result we wrote here we will be using it for the next theorem we are going to prove ok now the result of based on time it's not uh, easy to see what the physical significance of that is ok it is definitely true and you can prove it you know mathematically theoretically it's still not at least it's not clear to me what the physical significance of this is any questions on telegance theorem because we are moving on to the next theorem which is going to use telegance theorem see what we have been doing right we have been using the proving one theorem after the another and trying to use the previous theorem to prove the next one so we are moving on from telegance theorem any questions What is voltage V1? What is V1? So I have this 1 ampere current source. Okay. It splits between these two resistors 1 ohm and 5 ohms. So the current flowing through the 5 ohm will be 1 by 6 of this 1 ampere times it's flowing through the 3 ohms so this is half a volt correct I have a current I have a current 1 ampere entering this I have 1 ohm and 5 ohm in parallel the current flowing through the 5 ohm is going to be 1 6 of this 1 ampere ok and then that multiplied by this 3 ohm is going to give you V1 what is that? it's 3 by 6 which is half a half a volt what is V2? <coughs> what is the current entering here? 1 ampere it splits between these two branches what is the current flowing between each branch half an ampere times 1 ohm is times half into 1 half a volt right so does this seem weird to you I took a network a resistive network ok I put in a current source between two terminals I looked at the voltage across two terminals in the network now what I have done is so let us say these terminals were 1, 1 prime, 2, 2 prime 
Okay. What I did is I took this current source and put it between 2 and 2 prime and I monitored the voltage across 1 1 prime. It happened to be the same. Right? Do you think there is anything weird about this? Is it what you would have expected? Is it what you would have expected or you would have expected some arbitrary number? Okay, so let us see. Let us see what you should be expecting. I take any network M consisting of linear resistors. And I am going to look at any two sets of two pairs of ports, 1, 1 prime and 2, 2 prime. Okay, this network N now consists only of resistors. And let us say this was I1, this was P1, okay, and uh, this was V2, okay, I get some voltage V2, what is this voltage V2, what will it depend on? R, what is R? This is just some resistive network. Resistors. There is no R. I mean there is R1, R2, R3 and so on. Right? So what will, uh, what can you say definitively about V2? It will be proportional to I1. Right? This is a linear resistive network. Okay? It will be proportional to I1. Right? You put 1 ampere, you get some V2. You put 2 amperes, you will get 2 V2. Right? Okay? Very good. So I take this 2, 2 prime and I have an I2 hat V2 hat ok and I am looking at V1 hat ok these are the two cases right this is analogous to what we just saw for the example network. I apply a current source here, I look at the voltage between those two, I apply a current source on between 2 and 2 prime and I look at the voltage between 1 and 1 prime. Any questions so far? This is exactly analogous to the network. This is just a more generalized case of the network I just drew. Right? Now, how do you prove this? How do you find out the relationship between uh, I1, V1, V2, V1 hat, I2 hat, V2 hat, all of these things? I want to find out the relationship between these. <coughs> How do I find out the relationship? The obvious clue is that we just solved a theorem. What was that theorem? We just proved a theorem which was Telegon's theorem. So it makes sense to try to use Telegon's theorem here. So how would you use Telegon's theorem? 